Now, it was about a year ago that Tony Abbott made a comment about lifestyle choices and how Indigenous people living in remote communities were there as a lifestyle choice, which was an odd thing to say. You responded... Not if you look at his track record. <laughs> very fair point. Um, you responded with a remarkable video on your Facebook page. Yeah, it went it's, viral. <laughs> it's been a year since that happened. Can you still believe that it did happen? That Prime Minister of this country would say something like that? Yeah. Yeah, can I believe it, it happened? Yeah, absolutely. I wasn't surprised when it did. I was just, you know, offended, I guess. Um, yeah, look, I mean, in so many ways, things are getting worse in our country. Not just for Indigenous people, but for all of us. And it's we're just kind of watching it happen in a way, or not watching it and switching off. Um, you know, with this, you know, this this really shady backroom deals with the fair trade agreements, and you know, the amount of tax that it, you know, you know, our, our top five hundred companies aren't paying, mm. while I pay forty percent tax as a struggling artist. But um, look, it was. It was it was it was really offensive on a number of levels, but also because, you know, it it was proof to me that everything that was going on there was proof to me that we don't really qualify for a democracy anymore, um, or if we ever did, because the Australian people didn't get to vote on those changes that were made at a federal level, you know. So when on the east coast here, everyone makes a huge fuss about the recognise campaign, you know, and how that's going to change things. And I'm just looking at you, so I'm like, what? I'm sorry, you want me to take this all seriously? It's 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 not, it's not happening. So I mean, the big thing we need now is is leadership across the board, and we need that in regional areas as well. I just spent some time out in New South Wales, Condoblin, working with Young Mob on a short film, which was which was really rewarding um, but it's yeah look it's a, it's a very complicated issue that whole stuff all of that stuff like you know um, that's a long conversation yeah but just with that video I think one of the things that made it so effective was that you weren't angry in the video and it was obviously a deliberate choice that you made I know that you want to be a director or you want to do more directing because you've directed a short film. Mm. Um, did you consciously think that through, knowing that if you had gone on video enraged about what had been said, that would have gotten arguably a bigger response? You chose a much more measured, moderate, sedate response. Why did you choose that? Um, I'm not sure if it, it would have gotten more views had it been sort of, you know, a Rage Against the Machine type performance. Fair um, point, fair point. Uh, and it didn't necessarily um, uh, impress everyone that I, that I did it in the, in the way I did it. I, I remember seeing, like, a lot of comments which I kind of had to resist responding to, um, which, was, which were kind of along the lines of, oh, he's very smug and rah, rah, rah. But, look, to... Like for me, it was it was just like I, I don't know. It was, it was it was behind behind the sort of you know the the comedy and and the deliberate confidence um, was uh, like a was dignity, I guess. I don't you know I didn't want to give you know the perpetrators of you know these circumstances. The, you know, um, the pleasure of my, you know, obvious, you know, discomfort. It is there, but, like, you know, I, I'm, I only really want to showcase, you know, my pain and anger if I'm being paid to. <laughs> it looked like a video that was made by someone who wants to be a director. Do you? Yeah, look, um, I, I did my first short film many years ago, and... Uh, it's a lot harder than acting, <laughs> but um, after I did it, 
and there was a lot of you know the politics of actually being a director is really interesting as well but um, but uh, I took a break straight afterwards and I kind of went into sort of a period of waiting for a story to come to me and in the last sort of yeah 12 months there's some sort of story starting to kind of bubble to the surface um, whether or not uh, they eventuate anytime soon is another matter entirely but yeah, definitely. If it gives me the opportunity to kind of um, work with younger mob as well, I'm really interested in that. So, yeah, look, it's a pretty good show. You liked it? Very enjoyable. Yeah, it's incredible the influence that Alien and Aliens and that kind of science fiction set design, that realism. It's mm. amazing the effect those few years of filmmaking have had on young filmmakers, which you see in the series. Mm. How did the series go? You obviously enjoyed making it. You said that you oh, were surprised sorry. to get a lead role in the series. Just tell us a little bit about Airlock. Airlock, uh, Airlock was a lot of fun. It was it was a grueling shoot. Two weeks we shot all of that content, and we were just we were right we were under the gun the whole time. Um, Enzo Tedeschi, uh, the creator and one of the writers, is um, he's an incredible um, powerhouse, and and certainly like I was going to call him an up and comer, but he's already turned up. Uh, Airlock's gone on to receive. Um, accolades across the planet, the solar system. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, what was, what, was really, uh, what was really fun and sort of all kind of liberating about w working on that was the fact that it was sort of like ethnically undefined, set 300 years in the future in some unknown quadrant, you know, all of that sort of stuff, you know, you get, you get the chance to just let your imagination go, you know, and throw it all together. Um, yeah, look, Elox, I, I look back on that whole production and the content that's come out of it with a great deal of fondness. Uh, yeah. My final question, and thank you very, very much for your time and your wonderful comments. Oh, thank you for having me. What kind of movies do you like? <sighs> what are your tastes? I'm, 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 don't be I'm, proud. No, no, I'm very non-specific. Yeah. I, I, I'm sort of, I'm all, I'm all over the place. You don't have to say, you know, high art. You can no, no, no. I, I like. Look, one of one of my all-time favourites is a film that goes under the radar a lot by Robert Townsend called Meteor Man, um, and it's early '90s, and it's a terrific film. And uh, I just managed to get it on Blu-ray. I had to order it over from the US the other month. And it got here, but I forgot about the region code. So now I need to get myself a cheap bloody DVD player just so I can watch it. So yeah, Me Meteor Man comes to mind. I did not um, think I would live long enough, by the way, to um, meet another human being who's seen that movie. But oh, really? That's by the well, way. there you yeah. go. Well, snap. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, what did I see recently? I saw Youth, um, which okay. was a really interesting film. Um, uh, El Motivar's, um The Skin I Live In. I think that's a really um, sick movie. Sick film. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's yeah. I've got a very wide and varied taste. Terrific. Um, Is it, mate, do you have a particular thing that you want to achieve? Do you have an ambition? An um, end point? Yeah. Look. One of one of my ambitions is to is to finish um, an EP that I've been working on now for the last eighteen months. I want to sort of wrap that up by the end of this year, and hopefully, if we go to season two of Hunters, which is the American sci-fi series which airs today in the US, and hopefully comes you know with only a short delay to uh, the Australian cable network at some point. Hopefully, if we go to season two, then I'll be able to bankroll my first EP. So, you know, it's one thing at a time. Sensational. You know, Hunters awesome. is this big sci-fi. It is, it is. It's sort of like, you know, channel. Airlock was like my rehearsals almost yeah. to, to, to take on the, you know, a really, the, the action hero character. That was the other thing about That's it. That's great. How did you was, get that? You know, it's, you're suddenly like, yeah. you know, and I, and I didn't play that too hard with Airlock, you know, because I wanted him to get there at the end. Yeah. You know, I wanted Jonah to suddenly go, okay, I've got to man up now because my family's dead and my space station's gone, all of that. But with, um, with Hunters, it's sort of like straight, straight out the gate. He's like, tough guy, That's tough a guy. Big, big deal. <laughs> a major role. Yeah. In American yeah, look, science fiction. Yeah, How'd you get it? Um, I auditioned, uh, and then they were like, yeah, well, have, like, the, I think the character was originally some Asian guy, uh, who knew Kung Fu and stuff, and I was like, well, I, I can't do any of that, but I'll go in there and I'll do the lines. I did those, and then got a call back, and they were like, they're going to rewrite the character, um, do you have any input? And I was like, well, yeah, let's, let's make him Aboriginal, Australian, and that way I don't have to do a US accent while I'm on set, and I didn't have to do a US accent, so represent. I even got the flag. On the side of my I haven't seen um, the show. Yeah, well, you're you, joking. You, you, you actually got them to change the character 
to an Australian Indigenous... I, I don't want to come across as too authoritarian, no, Sarah, I but I, no, I, I certainly it. negotiated that. Yeah. And um, yeah, even with even with the costume chicks, when I had my tactical gear, I was like, because they put the US flag on the shoulder, and I was like, do you mind if I just put the Aboriginal flag underneath? And they were like, oh, yeah, okay. And I was like, snap, got it in there. So. <laughs> I love it. They wanted you so much, they accommodated. Yeah, those no, requests. it was great. And it was, look, I was working with, you know, some amazing, amazing actors and, um, you know, uh, writers. It was, it was an incredible series. I'm looking forward to seeing it. So. Mark Cole Smith, that's power. Mm. Use it wisely. Oh, yes, yes. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. That's my only next challenge, eh? Just Mark. hold on to my soul. Mark, thank you so much. Thank you so I'm much, Dan.